Holly with Mountain Express and I am here at Malaprops with Sarah Benincasa who is going to read tonight and talk about her book, Agora Fabulous. I don't know why that word is hard to say. I, it's a weird word. It's a word that I invented to describe the place where uh, agoraphobia and fabulousness intersect. So it's, it's a bizarre word. It's a bizarre and yet utterly perfect word. Thank you. And it's a bizarre and utterly awesome book. It's completely entertaining. I was hooked instantly. So I think that this is going to be a great reading, but we're going to talk for a few minutes um, in advance of her reading just about the book. So something that really jumped out at me about the book is that you're so forthcoming, and you, even though it's really humorous, and really, um, you're just unflinching about talking about things that were coming up for you with, with anxiety disorder. And I wondered if you ever felt like you might want to rewrite some parts, like maybe not tell everybody about the bowls of pee or anything like that. There are times when I consider it, when I think, well, you know, maybe it would have been better if I left this out, or oftentimes it would have been better if I put this part in. But generally, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. And I had told all of those stories before. So I, I told them on stages for everywhere from North Carolina to Norway. So I was used to audiences reacting in particular ways. And what was most important to me was that my family be OK with it. And they read the manuscript before it was published, and they OKed it. So that was fine by me. So were there any changes, anything that they? Had you leave out? No, yeah. nothing, nothing. I mean, there were changes that I made for legal purposes, but yeah. which is co very common with memoir. But um, but no, my mom and dad were cool with it, so I was happy about that. That is really cool. So since you've written the book and since you've been telling the stories on stage, do you have people come up with you? come up to you and tell you about their experiences with anxiety or agoraphobia? Absolutely. People always come up to me now and talk to me about their issues with anxiety, especially if it involves agoraphobia, depression, and, and different things like that. And it's cool. I mean, I'm always very clear that I'm not a licensed therapist or medical <laughs> professional in any way, but that I'm just here to kind of be a witness for them as, as they've been a witness for me by you know, reading my book. Yeah. Well, it makes sense because I think a big part of that is just knowing that you're not not the only person feeling that. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think that it's really cool to have a book that does make light of it and shows someone who's gone through it. Well, I feel like the best way to handle the darkness is to laugh into it, because I think there are monsters there, but if you laugh at them, they turn into cuddly, fuzzy creatures who can be your friends. <laughs> so I think of this book as my cuddly, fuzzy creature. It's made yes. out of a lot of darkness. So some of the dark and pretty intense um, parts of the book took place here in Asheville and when you were a student at Warren Wilson. So is it is it ever weird to come back and visit Asheville or is it just good now? It's good. Asheville is always good. It's weird for me to go back to Boston, Massachusetts, which is where I had a, a breakdown that's chronicled in the book. But Asheville was largely a place of healing for me, so it's never weird to come back here. I always love it. I get very emotional when I come back here. and I wish that I could you know, afford to have a house here and then have a house in New York. But I can't even afford to have a house in New York, so <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Well, someday. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so writing is a pretty solitary exercise, and stand-up is, is really putting yourself out there. How, how do you, like, do you have to separate those two in, in, your, in your mind? Well, for me, I think of myself always as a writer, first and foremost. So stand-up is a way for me to try out writing on stage and to kind of focus group it, almost like an advertising company would, to see what works and what gets a laugh. Writing is extraordinarily lonely, and I love the performance component of what I do because it enables me to actually interact with other human beings instead of just being alone in front of my laptop all the time. So what's next for you? I am working on a young adult novel and I am, gosh, what else am I working on? Um, working on, oh, I'm, I'm traveling more to, after this I go to Brooklyn and then I go to uh, Houston, Austin, Portland, Oregon, and Denver, Colorado. So I'm traveling a lot through the rest of the, the rest of the season. Thanks. Thanks for taking a minute to talk to us. Thank you.